Professor Kutmans, really thank you for joining us. Thank you for your time. I want to know what does your team need to accomplish on this trip? We have been asked to take a deep look at the question, can we understand how this pandemic started? What was the origin of the pandemic? Mm -hmm. There are, of course, ideas about where the virus originally has come from, uh, most likely bat reservoirs, but can we somehow reconstruct how exactly mm -hmm. that, that happened mm -hmm. um, to learn from that for the future of preparedness for emerging diseases. Mm -hmm. Then personally, what's the primary task you and your team hope to accomplish? I mean, what kind of data will you collect? Um, I think it would be as, uh, uh, the start of a probably longer term project because it takes a stepwise process uh, starting at the first uh, incident that we learned about. Uh, mm -hmm. So the original uh, group of cases in uh, Wuhan and, and really putting all the scientific information mm -hmm. that has already been collected by our colleagues uh, in, in China uh, together and discuss uh, what what does that tell us? Are there uh, uh, pieces of information that we would like to, to, to add? How could that be done? So it re really starts with a, a mapping exercise of all the work that has been done. And that's important because that may already uh, help us direct in certain direction for the follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've been asked to do is uh, really in discussion with our colleagues in, in China to, to work through that as a, as a true scientific uh, tracking expedition. Mm -hmm. As you have just mentioned, the World Health Organization had sent experts twice to China in February and July. What were those trips about and what's the difference now? So of course, in February, the focus was very much on the evolving epidemic, mm -hmm. uh, logically uh, not so much attention on really the origin because that's a more uh, academic question, mm -hmm. uh, but it is important for us to understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, in July, the WHO, it's my understanding that, that there already were discussions between the WHO and, and the Chinese team uh, to start some of uh, the work that would help address the question of what exactly happened and how did it get to this uh, pandemic. So where, what was the origin of the pandemic? Um, and some of those studies have started and we will uh, discuss the work with our colleagues as well. Throughout this year, we have learned new things about the virus, about uh, how it infects, who it infects, which animals it may infect. So it's also good to look back at the original studies and say, okay, with what we know now, is there additional things that uh, could be done? Then some people have uh, pointed fingers at China, blaming them for the spread of the virus. What do you think about such claims? I think that's uh, unfortunate because I think this is a global uh, responsibility. We know, and, and WHO has warned about the risk of emerging diseases, and I don't mm -hmm. think any country is immune to that. So uh, I don't think this is about blaming, it's really about understanding um, and learning about that for the future of our global preparedness. So yeah, yeah I, I don't think we should be uh, pointing fingers here. Recent reports say a study showed Italy potentially had uh, COVID-19 cases months before it wound up in China. Other scientific studies also suggest the virus appeared in the U.S. in mid-December 2019 and in France in late December. That's before or around the time the virus was officially identified in China. So does this indicate that the virus might have uh, simply occurred in different places around the world at similar times? Uh, at this stage, I don't think we can rule anything out. We should rule anything out. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is uh, important to start at where sort of uh, uh, obviously in, in Wuhan, a big uh, outbreak uh, occurred. Uh, and 
yes, we all we, we need to have an open mind to all sorts of hypotheses, and that's really what we've been uh, asked to do. Uh, but starting in Wuhan, where of course. Uh, we first learned about uh, the situation. Well, over the past few months, mounting sporadic uh, outbreaks in China were found to be related to imported cold chain products. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, to me that is, uh, and we've discussed that also with our colleagues, to me that is uh, one of the more puzzling uh, things. Mm -hmm. um, I, so it, it is possible that uh, we, we of course know that the primary route of transmission is is through droplets and aerosols mm -hmm. it is possible we've seen that with sars that other uh, routes are possible that 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 and that you can have environmental contamination um but it give, Given what we know about the virus, it is difficult for me to understand how the virus would survive, let's say, cold uh, storage, uh, certainly for a prolonged period of time on the outside of packages. So that's that's kind of that's the kind of information uh, we should really dig down deep in. Is that is that really uh, the the introduction, or is there maybe some pockets of circulation elsewhere? I think that's that. That it, it is it is important to understand. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that the the virus may have not occurred in the place we first found it? That's very well possible. So in it's possible it so an in, in initial spillover happened close to where uh, we saw the first uh, cluster. It's also possible that that was a super spreading event we've seen that those are important part of how this virus uh, spreads mm -hmm. um, and that the the initial events happened elsewhere so yes that that's that's all uh, possible well you personally have been tracing covid 19 outbreaks in the netherlands among mink farms what sort of things have you found so what we found is uh, that that this virus very easily uh, spreads among mink um, mm. we have seen it introduced so people with infection on several occasions have introduced have infected the animals how exactly we don't know uh, and then we've seen the virus uh, spread from one mink, mink to the next and also from one farm to the next and that is something we are studying in our country how exactly does that work because we don't we don't fully understand it. Um, we know from the uh, genomic tracking of the virus that the farm viruses are linked, but mm -hmm. we don't really understand how it got from one farm to the other. Is that through people, uh, people that, that uh, maybe have not recognized that they had uh, infection? Is it maybe through some type of wild animal? Um, so we are doing these kinds of studies as well. So it's most likely to be carried by minks more than other mammal animals? I think mink is uh, a species to consider, uh, particularly because these, are, these animals are kept in large numbers for their fur. Uh, and of course, if you have large numbers of animals uh, together, if there is a virus, it has plenty of opportunity to spread. So I think it's certainly important to look there, but there are other uh, animals that are susceptible and that, that fit that uh, condition. So yes, I think uh, that that's, that's a question that I have. What is the locations of the, the fur farms and, can, and what can be done to maybe look back is, if there's a possible role of, of fur farming in, mm -hmm. in triggering the spread?